Hey there, Olivia here. This is a follow along video in which we will be in a full squat position and then we will add a huge variety of movements to that squat. The most restricted part of my body has always been my ankle joints, extremely tight through the ankles. When I first came to stretch therapy 25 years ago now, I spent a lot of time working on all the calf stretches and I had quite a bit of results from that. But still, the full squat was an extremely limited movement in my body because of lack of range of movement at the ankle joints. And what I came to find was that the thing that really helped me unlock those ankle joints was to spend long periods of time in the full squat and add movement to it. Now, in order to spend a long period of time in a full squat, when that's a restricted range of movement for you, you cannot be working at your end range of movement. So you can't be struggling even in the first squat position. Because if you approach it that way, all that happens is all these muscles through the front of the ankle and the front of the shins cramp and cramp and they're going to spasm and it's incredibly uncomfortable. So by all means, use a heel lift of some sort so that you're not having to work so hard to get into the initial squat position. And also with the heels just fractionally higher than the toe end of the feet, um, your weight is being moved forward, which is also good to stay in the bottom position. So let's follow along. I'm going to stand up, my face will go off camera, and we'll just talk about the initial position. I like to have my feet just a little bit wider than hip width apart, and we're not going to be too concerned about being purist about having the feet parallel, whatever is comfortable for you initially. And I'm on a, a mat which is about two inches thick and it's just my heels up on the mat. Okay, so then down you come into your full squat position and you settle there. So just to reiterate, if the height of the heel lift that you've chosen means that you're really struggling to get into this first position, you need a higher heel lift. This should be comfortable, a position of rest to begin with. Then I start doing some little rocking movements of my whole body side to side. I'm feeling what that feels like in my ankles, in my knees, in my hips, in my lower back. Because whilst I introduce this as being for your ankles, of course, all those other joints are involved in the full squat position. How does it feel as you add a little bit of movement? Are you aware that there's some rigidity or lack of release in the calf muscles here? And that might be why you feel some sensations in the knees. I prefer you to the, the rolling techniques that we use to soften those calf muscles. And then just pause, pause here. And now let's pay attention to the ankles in particular. So the first thing I'm going to do is let my ankles roll in, let them pronate and I'll feel all the weight come onto the big toe joints. And then I'm going to do the opposite, feel the weight go through the middle of the feet and then roll the ankles out so that the very base of the big toe joint is just being picked up a little bit and then repeat. So let the ankles roll in, all the weights on the big toe joints through the center and then to the outside, little toe edges of the feet. And how does that feel in your ankles, in your feet, in your knees? How does it feel? You might already be starting to feel some cramping at the front of the ankles. Ignore that, it will stop when you stand up. I'm being a little bit cheeky, but what I found was my body needed to get used to that cramping sensation. And as you do this more and more, and as the ankle joints free up, you'll find that that cramping is less and less. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to take my arms out of the way, and then I'm really going to exaggerate the knee movement now. Knee and hip. Really, that movement's coming from the hips. So I'm leading with the knees. The hips are internally rotating. Then we're doing a little bit of external rotation. 
and I'm following that movement still with the ankles and the feet. How does that feel? Good. And then pause and settle. Go back to that little side to side drifting movement. Good. All right. Now, let's get my arms out of the way. Now I'm adding a deliberate shift to one foot, shift to the other foot, and my focus is on the feeling of, or actually the movement of this knee traveling forward over the foot. So one of the things that's very difficult when you're tied in the ankles in the full squat is that you, your knee will not travel forward and you can't get your weight forward enough to be able to settle in the full squat. So that is what this little movement is designed to emphasize. How does it feel in the ankles, in the knees, in the hips? Good. Now you can vary the position if I go way out to the side here so that all of the weight's on the little toe edge and move myself forward, that has one effect. This is completely controlled and it's only your body's weight load. So don't be too concerned about you know, how the joints designed to do this kind of movement. It's all completely controlled by you. Good, all right. And then again, settle. Then spread the knees apart. We'll do a contraction here. Try and pull the knees together against the resistance of your arms. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop, take a breath, and then take your arms out of the way. Now we practice the movement of activating the muscles on the outside of the hips to pull the knees apart. How does that feel? Because you may find that there's limitations in the groins and in the hip joints themselves. That's limiting your squat. Good. All right. And then settle. Now let's think about the lower back. Let yourself slump completely and let the weight sink back into your heels. Then take a breath in and exaggerate, sticking the bottom out and lifting the chest. And then just go back and forwards a few times. When you slump down, let your weight go back into the heels a tad more. And as you take a breath in and lift the chest, let the knees go forward, a bit more weight into the ball of the foot or feet and feel what that feels like. And you might in this slumped position feel a bit of a stretch in the lower back. So just pause there and I'm just wriggling my hips from side to side. Just little movements there. How does it feel? Go back to the upright position and really lift the arms up. Really exaggerate that. Stick the bottom out. Keep the weight down in the heels. How does that feel? And then as you breathe out, come through. All right, that's probably enough for one sequence. I can't see the clock. I think we've been here for about five or six minutes. To come out, you could take a deep breath in and stand up or just come forward. Now, I'm sure you can think of many other movements you could do in that position, but I really encourage you to spend time in the full squat and add any movements that you can think of. Give it a go.